I guess they'll be able to hear Gloria's lecture. Um, so we're very happy that you all joined us. I'm Maya Nair. I'm Photo Israel's uh, chief curator and the curator of the International Photography Festival. And uh, we're excited to have so many people here from all over the world. And uh, this difficult situation is actually, you know, it has some advantages as, you know, being able to share this lecture with all of you uh, with you know a photographer speaking to us from Spain and uh, we're actually curious to know where you're from so you're welcome like to write in the chat where you're joining us from today um, so I'm going to share the screen for a minute just before Gloria starts tell you a few words about uh, the Meitar award and this year's uh, unique edition of the award because I don't see anyone. Okay, good. Gloria, I see you. I can't do this without seeing you. <laughs> okay. So um, we're, we're happy to host uh, Gloria Oyarzabal, oh, I have to, you have to tell me how you say your last name. Oyarzabal. Okay. <laughs> Oyarzabal. Uh, for a lecture, she's the winner of the last year's Maitar Award for Excellence in Photography. And uh, this lecture is part of a series of events that we're going to have as part of this year's prize, which is uh, currently running. Uh, we'll have another event uh, on the 9th of July, which we will send details on soon. It will be another interesting content event. So before uh, we get to our main lecture, I want to say a few words about uh, the Meitar Award and about Photo Israel. So if uh, someone doesn't know us, then we are a not-for-profit company based in Israel. Uh, doing uh, various activities in the language of photography. We do a lot of social outreach programs, which we have done a lot of uh, during this period uh, around the virus and uh, with different uh, communities around the country. And uh, one of our main events is uh, the International Photography Festival, which will enter its uh, eighth edition this November. Uh, despite of the situation, the festival will happen, uh, and we'll give more details soon. Uh, we hope to have a festival which most of it is outside. We will have a program of lectures which will also be online, so we'll have a lot of international content, both uh, physical and uh, virtual. Um, so this is a bit about us. Uh, and about the Meitar Award, which is the reason that uh, we're here today. So this is the fifth edition of the Meitar Award, which is now uh, open. Uh, and it's a bit different than the previous years. So uh, we have had four winners of the award, uh, each one of them uh, in a different style, uh, comes from different country, uh, with very different agendas, which is part of the beauty of this prize, the prize is for uh, excellence in photography. Uh, and uh, the different, the various winners we had over the years. So the first winner in uh, 2016 was uh, Doron Oved, she's an Israeli photographer, uh, who won for a very uh, intimate poetic series. Uh, then a year later, we had Christian Werner, which is a German photojournalist and a very documentary project. And then the next year we had Mark Oram Lechlef, which presented his solo exhibition in our last festival, with kind of a combination uh, between a personal and documentary project. 
which I think in a way describes Gloria's project as well, but she'll tell us all about it later. Gloria, of course, is last year's winner. Um, and other than the winner, which each year got a grant, a personal grant and a grant for a solo exhibition, which is also what Gloria received. Uh, we have 20 finalists each year, which exhibit in a group exhibition and the festival. So this is the exhibitions from the last two festivals. And uh, this year we'll also have a finalist from exhibition from the 20 finalists from this year's award. Um, and this is the finalist exhibition last year, which traveled to Sydney in Australia. Uh, but this year we have a special edition of the prize uh, for this unique year. So I'm going to show you a very short uh, clip and then we'll, I'll say a few words about it. You, what we saw was uh, works from uh, the finalists from last year and Gloria's works as well. Um, and this year we've decided to change the, uh, the award for this unique year because of everything that has happened. Uh, so the w w there will still be a finalist exhibition, but from the 20 finalists, one winner, uh, we win uh, 20,000 worth dollar worth grant for the publication of a professional photography book uh, through Loa Press, which is a very uh, boutique uh, publication from Warsaw. Also, uh, they're joining us here tonight. They're supposed to be here. Maybe we'll say hello a bit uh, later on. Uh, we will announce the winner in the festival. Um, in November, and then you will have a whole year to work on the book uh, together with our team and together with Blow Up Press's team. And the book will be launched at the festival in 2021. It will also be distributed through various uh, platforms. Uh, the winner will receive royalties from the book. And as I said, uh, there will also be a final exhibition. Uh, and we're very proud of our jury this year. So I just want to say a few words about them. It's also important to note that uh, the judging process is all anonymous. So uh, no one can see who the photographer is, what they've studied, where they're from. It's all about the works themselves. Uh, so we have a very distinguished jury from all over the world. Uh, Davide Dika, who's uh, joining us for the third year, is a photographer and he's the head of the photography department at Bezalel here in Israel. We have Michael Benson, who's the founder of Candlestar and Photo London. Maya Benton, uh, also joining us again, who is a curator from uh, New York, art historian and visiting professor at Yale. Uh, Dr. Susan Wright, which is a wonderful curator from the UK. Krzysztof uh, Kanrowicz, who is a uh, curator and researcher uh, also from Poland, uh, Sean Davy, who's a great photographer, Miriam Kuiman for the second year, she's a curator at FOAM. Um, and we have uh, Jagos Kusmala uh, from Blowa Press, who's also here tonight. Uh, Daphna Meitar Nechmat, she's the representative of uh, our partners from the Zian Ofra Meitar Family Fund, who will say a few words in a minute. Uh, Rivka Sacker, who's been with us since the beginning. No, show me. Can, sorry, I was muted somehow. 
Okay, so I'm uh, about to finish talking about the prize, and uh, I want to invite uh, Daphna Meitar Nechmad from the Meitar Family Fund just to say a few words before Gloria begins. Hi, Daphna. Hi, good evening, Maya. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is really exciting for me to see so many, to see and know that so many people, so many photographers are interested in our award. Uh, this is a young award. Uh, my family, the Mita family, uh, started this uh, award uh, together with Maya and uh, Eyal and the Photo Israel uh, five years ago. Uh, and really, this is a very short time for a prize or uh, for an award. Um, and you can see by the esteemed jury and uh, by the number of uh, participants and uh, obviously from the works that were uh, selected and the photographers that won the prize earlier that uh, we are on the right track um, for me personally uh, photography is both art and um, evidence of what is happening here we are living now in a very difficult situation uh, very we, we have no idea how long this will last and I, I understand that this will be for generations to come to learn and I think that photography that uh, will uh, be taking now uh, will will tell the story uh, and you are the ones who will tell the story like when we see what happened let's say, uh, uh, in, in, in the previous uh, years in history, uh, I believe that pictures are the, 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 the main, uh, the best way to look at the past and see what happened. Of course, there is Photoshop and there is fake news and everyone is uh, exposed to so much that we sometimes find it hard to, to, to tell what is right and what is wrong, but I still believe that uh, uh, that the photography and the photographers have a big uh, role in this. So I feel that we are relevant uh, more than ever, uh, if you can say that. So I just uh, would like to wish all of you good luck with the prize and. Uh, Please stay healthy and Gloria, uh, congratulations on your winning last year and I'm looking forward to hear uh, your lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Daphna. Thank you and thank you again for your support all these years and your partnership. It really means a lot to us and especially to all these photographers. So thank you very much. It's my pleasure and I would just want to say that I representing my family so I'm not alone in that but I'm the one who get to be on the jury and enjoy myself. <laughs> right. Okay, so that uh, okay so now uh, we came to the main part of the evening and uh, so I'm happy to introduce uh, Gloria Oyazarbal. So I'll say just a few words about Gloria. Uh, Gloria is a Spanish photographer. She was born in London in 1971. Uh, she has a master's degree in creation and development of photo photographic projects, which is, you know, a wonderful master's degree. I didn't even know it was such a such a degree. Uh, it's a blank paper school of photography in Madrid, and her work has been widely exhibited in festivals and uh, in museums worldwide. Uh, among the places she has exhibited is a uh, Lagos Photo in Nigeria, uh, Photo España Madrid, uh, Odessa Photo Days, Helsinki Photo, and many more. And, uh, this year with us in Tel Aviv. Um, Gloria uh, the, diversifies her activities between film, photography, and teaching. She is co founder and programmer. Uh, she was uh, at the independent cinema. Uh, Le Enana Maun, which is the ground dwarf in Madrid uh, between 1999 and 2009, uh, which was dedicated to the diffusion of uh, experimental and alternative cinema. Uh, and she talked today about the project she won the Meitar Award for, uh, 
and the other projects that led her to this project. And uh, you've sent us many questions and she will answer as many of them as possible uh, at the end of her lecture. So Gloria, thank you for being here and you're welcome to share your screen. Well, thank you very much, Maya. Thank you, Photo Israel. And of course, thank you, Daphna and your family for this uh, big support for us. And, and well, for me, it was very exciting to, to win this award. Uh, um, I, I really didn't expect it because I think there's so much good projects around. So, so I was quite surprised and I'm very, very excited to, to go next edition if, if everything goes well and fingers crossed that we all get together. And okay, so I will just try to make it like very fluid. I'm going to talk about the, the three projects that I think are very linked between them and that maybe can explain better how I did get to the to the to the project that was awarded so that way you can you can understand a little bit my well all the the, the what my input and what I, I need as feedbacks to 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 produce and to to make my my head move a little bit so let me share. Okay, so uh, this project um, has its roots maybe when I went to to leave to 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 Mali in 2009 well i previously previously were traveling in 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 africa for many years but not just for enjoying and, and knowing and but this time well my partner and myself we went to to the shoot of an experimental film or documentary so we decided to, that the best way to to address any subject is to to be in place for a long time not just visit and then run away so we took the kids and the dog and and we went to live for three years in mali and before that uh, i did visit once uh, my first time in the documenta in in castle in germany i discovered this book uh, uh the one the two on the top did you see my 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 screen maya yes 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 Let's okay see. wonderful just i mean i was wondering if i was talking like for <laughs> me for myself yeah, so i know the feeling <laughs> so so i discovered these two books that you can see on top and and they were one of them was was talking about this character that's called Sombe and that how he ended up in Spain. So well, so I went to, to live to Mali and then when I came back, well I went to France for two years. And then when I came back to Madrid and I decided to be the, to do this master because my my previous life was uh, much more linked to fine arts, but in a way of not especially uh, focus on on photography and i was teacher and in the university and and i didn't spend all the time that i wanted on my personal project so i when i came back i decided to 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 give me as a grant uh, a whole year of of producing my my project so i i decided to to concentrate in this tombe character that that I, I i i really thought that it was going to to open my mind uh, of what i was going to discover so of course uh, talking about a a, a a character from from the democratic republic of congo just and and i had to understand what ha what happened uh, previously what was the the state of the 
um, situation before this man was was over there so so i ended up well about all this story that you might know about the free state of congo and leopold the second uh, and and all these nightmares uh, and this incredible story uh, so i really had to learn how to position myself because I, I in Mali, I, I really worked on understanding how the, the idea of Africa, the um, imaginary uh, for the continent what has been built for the last 400 years in a very Manichaean way. So uh, once I had that like base of knowledge that uh, um, allowed me to, to, to put my, my um, theories on on the center, so I I started like um, with with a lot of respect because I don't want to victimize anybody and I don't want to blame anybody. I think everybody has uh, responsibility on both sides. But what was done to the continent, it was like a genocide. Uh, I mean, only in the years that Leopold II was in in, in his state, um, in free state of Congo, that was 23 years. Uh, the population was, uh, I mean, it was reduced to half of it, and that's it's a genocide. So, I, I mean, it was a discovery for me. I didn't know. I, I mean, I didn't study that. In Spain, we don't have any um, studies about Africa. We have a, an old colony in Guinea Equatorial, and you don't, you don't learn anything. And well, in, in my days, you don't, you didn't learn about, you don't have to study about the, our colonies. You did study about uh, South America, but not Latin America, but not about Africa. So for me, all this was so new, so new. So I was just talking about a little bit history. So I started to produce all these uh, dummies. Uh, I don't know if you are very much into photo books, all of you. Um, I mean, I suppose that many of you want to to produce a, a photo book, and it's a incredible uh, process of of mixing everything. I mean, I. I love cinema, and it's the the most the, the thing that I've done more uh, similar to to editing uh, image and sound. Uh, so it's a it's a very intimate and and sometimes frustrating uh, process. So I don't know. I, I I it was like nonstop making all these dummies. And two years later, I I was just about to 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 to, to put the dummy on the on my uh, I mean under my bed. I was a little bit desperate. It it was um, a finalist in many and many uh, uh, open calls around the world, and yeah, I was very happy. But I I, I couldn't uh, I I wasn't. Uh, able to 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 print it so once my last try was this festival called Hans Krona in Sweden and to my surprise I won um, and it was very 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 exciting and very I mean I was so pleased so I started a beautiful process um, working with with editor and with a professional designer and a very good designer indeed um, and with all this pre-printing and a very good print house uh, made my project uh, much more um, enlightened and, and like it, it glowed so so for me it was a, a luxury so for example for the uh, for the cover, we were very much inspired by all these picture uh, books uh, from that, from the, the uh, end of 19th century and beginning of the 20th. Um, uh, kind of criticism because they were one of the responsibles of, of uh, 
making this uh, uh, idea of Africa, this imaginary towards the continent. So we were just like picking up ideas. So finally, I got my book. Uh, on the right, you can see on the right side, you can see Alberto Salvans, who's the designer from Tres Tipos Gráficos, very good designers. Uh, Moritz Nemuller, the uh, editor, and myself in Arles, which is like, uh, I don't know, like going to, to the Oscars or something like that. <laughs> Uh, behind you can see Tommaso Parrillo, who is, it was from Wipikiwi Books, who co-edited the book. So I was, I'm going just to pass a, a little bit. I mean, for example, I work with a lot of um, formats, a lot of materials. I like to use uh, archive, as you've seen, but I'm also working with Polaroids. That photo on the right is a Polaroid and I have my digital images and, and text, archive text. So the designer uh, thought that what was important is as all the, mainly all the texts were in Spanish because they were all extracts from uh, new, uh, Spanish newspapers. Uh, he thought that it was very interesting to being able to read at the same time as you watch the images. So you get this. So you came from here, you opened it, and you can read on this at the same time the 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 traduction, the translation of to English. And well, it worked very well. As I always tell him, it's very mm, complicated to read this book on at bed. I mean, you really have to be in a table, but but it's, it's a nice way of having uh, uh, both the text at the same time. So mainly, um, this is the first, the second page. Uh, I'm starting with this photo that it's half of the photo of Tombe with Franco, the, the dictation, the Spanish dictatorship, who welcomed him as if he was a super cool guy. And in fact, he was the responsible of, of Lumumba's uh, assassination. And Lumumba was like the symbol of independence for Africa. It was kind of Che Guevara, or I don't know how to call him. So he wasn't that nice. Um, so here you can see a small, I mean, I just passed through these terrifying years uh, that's uh, Henry Morton Stanley that Leopold II sent to colonize everyone. A map. And then you can see uh, images that I found in, in flea markets. Uh, and then I make this um, diptychs, these kind of cosmologies of uh, archive images. This is a Polaroid too. This is Lumumba. In mainly any every uh, African country, you can find a Lumumba statue. Um, this is uh, Lumumba's wife. When African women, they are very uh, dishonored. They want to protest for something. They just go out. Uh, nude for breast nude to protest so i mean it's a book with a lot of images text there are no texts uh, written by me so it's something that afterwards i've been like uh, asked for um and I'm talking a little bit of everything, the old Europe concept in this image. This is another Polaroid, the fake paradises, the trip. And as the end, as a conclusion, it's, um, 
In Madrid, where I live, I live in the center and the main street is called the Gran Vía, where all these uh, people, immigrants, black immigrants, they place their uh, blankets or sheets on the, on the floor selling uh, fake Chinese uh, objects. As, I mean, you know what I mean, Chanel bags and, and Nike sneakers and and then when they when the police comes they have to run they're called manteros in in spanish manta is is blanket and so it's a, a little bit of of a, of a way of of finishing the project as this is the consequence of all what i've been telling you about was my everyday reality what i see so these are the only two images that I, I have at the end, which refers because I, I really worked with them. I, and I, as I'm not a portrait photographer, I didn't want to do what I wasn't uh, comfortable with at that time. And this is a text from Paul Vidilio's uh, The Aesthetic of the Separation, of Disappearance, sorry, which gives name to the project. Uh, where he talks about the concept of pycnolepsy, uh, which is a kind of epilepsy uh, that makes you uh, black out suddenly. Uh, you didn't even realize when it happened. So it was a kind of, on, on one way, getting into uh, Tombez pycnolepsis, uh, because there's a chapter where he gets kidnapped. Um, and on the other way, it's a way of saying how our gaze, our uh, gaze towards the, 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 the continent, it's full of pycnolepsis because, I mean, there's a lot of information missing. And this is how it ends. So this project, comes from, this is the first time I, I, I did a layout. It was a, a, a group show in Madrid, 2015. I was in my, in my, in my master. And well, it was the center of, the, of this big project that I just showed you. It was the main chapter of his kidnapping. kidnapping and and as you see, I, I use text as, as art objects um, much more than what they tell you. This is the uh, big step that I, I, I did because I won this, this award and which gave me the opportunity to put it on, on the wall. Uh, it had a, a video and I was just experimenting a little bit, all the ideas I had in my, in my, in my mind. This is another award in Barcelona, uh, which I had to adapt to the beautiful space. And it gave me another opportunity to, to tell my story. And then in 2017, um i was uh, uh, invited to the to the artist residence in madrid called ranchito matadero which it doesn't exist but for years they what they did was um all these open calls that depending on the on the country uh, it was very interesting because for example if it was ranchito matadero of philippines you they brought um, an artist from Philippines and then you went over there. So I, I applied um, logically to the Nigeria, South Africa, and, and I was selected. So I was very happy. So it's this beautiful, super huge space in, in, in Madrid that it was, a, I don't know what's the name of the place where you Kill the Yeah. That's a slaughter house. Slaughter house, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Slaughter house. So um so now it's a it's a very cool art uh, space. 
So uh, I worked with uh, four Spanish, uh, almost um, three Spanish uh, artists and four African, two from South Africa and two from Nigeria. And this was the, the um, exhibition at the end of the residence. And it was super cool. My, my mates were really great. And it was called Susanna and the Elder. And I was very much inspired by the story of uh, um, Artemisia Gentileschi. And I, uh, like 10 months ago, uh, before, I went to Ghana. Uh, and I was very interested in all these uh, uh, fortresses where all the, 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 the um, slavery sh uh, boats uh, um, went to 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 the to the america from from there um so i tried to mix a little bit what was the situation of women uh the 17th century and what this what was the situation of the not in order to compare it was just uh, uh like uh exposure of the situation i usually don't I, I I like much more to to pose questions than to propose answers. So so it was uh, an installation, much more than a photo uh, exhibition, uh, where you can see the my I did this cast of my 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 own um, arms inspired uh, of the. From the from the painting of of Artemisa Gentileschi, which uh, her own stories, it was it was uh, it's it's incredible because he was she was raped. She painted that beautiful painting when she was sixteen, and uh, two years later, she was raped. So and the story of Suzanne is a, a little bit that i mean is these two old men that want to to have sex with her and all well, this a public uh, story and then i have this uh, photo of the um, trapdoor where they um, uh, brought the, the the slaves the women slaves uh, to the captain room so they would be raped so it was happening at the same time these two situations and then i had this structure that where i um, projected it screened some some slides of images from the from my trip from uh, ghana um, and then i had this point of lecture where i started this uh, uh, collection of african uh, writers feminist writers but not only i mean mainly but not only so this was the beginning of a big adventure you can see here this book that it was called it, it is called the invention of women or there's another one, this one, that is called male, uh, female husbands, male sisters. Um, both of them, uh, this one is from Oyeronko Yewemi, and this is Ifi Amadium, and well, and many other, I mean, this is uh, Thomas Sankara, The Emancipation of Women, The Joys of Motherhood from Buti Emeteta, and many of these books, um, I brought them to Nigeria, and I arrived with the idea that I wanted to meet all these powerful women that I was reading about. So there, there I went. And unfortunately, I, I couldn't find them. They were either living in, in England or in, in the United States uh, teaching, or they lived uh, in another country in Africa they died or so what I did was just stick what I was comfortable with that it was archive images so I did go to the National Museum which 
I mean, it was my third time in Nigeria, so it, I mean, I, I, I felt quite, um, I could move around easily. Um, but the National Museum was a big problem. They didn't uh, trust me. And I mean, they didn't trust any white, I think. But so I, I really was, um, it was hard for me to, to, to work over there. But at the end, I really enjoyed the, it and, and even made friends and it was great. So I went through all these archives. It is, it is a very um, turned down building. Uh, they don't have like very good uh, uh, installations. Uh, but, uh, well, I did my best. Um, and they did their best too. And then I just spent my two months uh, wandering around and enjoying uh, nightlife because uh, it was celebration. And now I have to talk about Fela Kuti which is um, the, the name of the project is Women Go No Gree. It's a, it's a sentence from a, from a song, of Pelakuti song from 1972 of the Shakara album, that its uh, name is Lady. So Women Go No Gree, well, actually it's Women Go uh, No Go Gree, but I did, turn the words a little bit on, on purpose. Uh, it talks about a little bit about if, I mean, it was written when, when Nigeria was, was in the middle of this uh, boost of their economy because of the oil uh, discovery. And it was uh, just uh, two years after the, the end of the civil war of Biafra, and it was, um, I mean, they just uh, like ten years before they 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 gained the independence uh, from the British colony, so they were they they were all in the middle of a big change. So one of the of the of the themes to that they, the to debate it was the the woman liberation if it should be uh, through the Western uh, model or through the their own uh, historical path of authenticity and and that is very linked very much linked with identity you know so i mean everything was starting to 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 be like very convulsive in my head because i had a lot of information and at the same time uh, nightlife was very very important because is there is is where I saw the, the young people and how they manage their own uh, um, place in the society in girls and celebration is this week where they go crazy and and it's all concerts and and music and and they go to the shrine which is this place that fella. Uh, built for people and that it's a huge place and it's free and it's 24 hours of music and and it, it's it's really interesting all the this process and I, re I remind you that Lagos is the biggest country in Africa so it's so everything is huge everything I mean moving around is it's 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 crazy um, so Fela Kuti was a very a peculiar uh, character and his mother was uh, the main or the most important feminist in Nigeria and I could even say maybe in Africa well not I don't know I wouldn't say that but it, I mean she was very very important and her life is very interesting so here you can see Fela Kuti's mother. You see where she came from and what was her life. So when she realized about all this uh, stress that they were going through, through this, mainly through the colonization of the mind, you know, like Teongo says, through language and through education, everything, 
uh, she decided to react and well she was the first one to to ride a car but she was she came back to to the tradition that it's a very complicated uh, thing for us western white uh, women because tradition usually is anti-feminist and for them it was a a, a tool of 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 uh, self-definition and of fight against uh, colonizers so she came back to the to her uh, traditional way of dressing and she gave these speeches in in Yoruba in in her language uh, so they needed to translate her so and then well I mean beauty beauty colonization it was i mean amazing uh, you can you have to think that 40 percent of women around the world uses bleaching creams which usually uh, what they do is to to uh, make thinner the skin and then when you have to have caesarea caesareas or uh, scars or whatever uh, they they die and and it all this comes from 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 this uh, horrible and uh, I don't know terrifying idea of whiteness that it's been uh, going around for the last 400 years, and that is so much uh, in on the on the media now. So manipulation. Uh, all these uh, processes of manipulation are very interesting. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was it was realizing what they were. It was very important to understand so many things. No, motherhood. Um, so, so sorority, sisterhood, um, stereotypes uh, is male. Um, uh, how do you say it? like uh, power normative in all societies? How is empowerment on each society for women? And how uh, they live their own religion? No, it's it's something that uh, colonization also brought. It's is done through religion, and usually what they do is to to um to make conflicts uh i i mean it was very interesting in in nigeria what i i found is that they achieved a way of mixing some religions and it it was very very interesting but on the other side the the ifa divination divination that it's so rooted in their in their history um is not well considered and it, it's on, on on one side is because of nollywood which is the second uh world um cinema um company in the world nollywood will not company how do you say uh production of films so um white privilege i stereotypes this hyper sexualized african women and then uh, i'm talking about a little bit of the future how is this ambiguity of this globalization how is affecting new generation and what is what is the power of of these women and mostly what I'm talking about is how I discovered that we shouldn't, we can't, uh, and we must not universalize uh, mainstream feminist uh, discourses. And that's why when I won the Image Beve Photo Book Award last year, that for me it was super great because it was the first uh, place that I sent the book and I won't so it, it was not at all as my previous experience um, 
at the end, we decided to put the, my sentence in, I mean, this is a, a project which I placed myself in the center because it comes from my own experience. And as I said, what I'm doing is post questions more than answers. And basically, um, the sentence of the cover says that, that I, I, I came back to Europe from Mali saying, oh my God, all these powerful women, why didn't they look at what we achieved all these years and they get inspired by us? And that was horrible to say that. So I was so ashamed when, when I realized that I was just talking us what I say, you know, typical privileged and empowered white women. And, and, I, and until I didn't know all these in, m magnificent and, and, and incredible writers that, I mean, they, they don't have to look at us. They have their own words. So this is just about to be finished. Uh, I mean, really just about, like maybe tonight. <laughs> Or, or in one week, it will go to the to the printing. And I will show you a little bit uh, some of the layouts. Uh, I've been very lucky for this last two years and a half. I've been exhibiting this project like in so many places. And it's been such a great gym for me to adapt to so many different uh, venues and, and incredible I mean, with big budgets, small budgets, uh, spaces very, very complicated, or I mean, whatever. I just wanted to 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 talk about what uh, I what I discovered or what I um, felt that it was important. Uh, and well, this is this was in 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 Portugal. And this was in in Kaunas in in Lithuania. So and this is in Madrid. So basically, this um, this uh, studio photos that I didn't tell you before, uh, I shot in in one day, and it was a way of of really getting myself out of my comfortable zone because I'm not at all a studio photographer. But I mean, be living in Mali for three years and being in Nigeria and not using a studio, it was like, okay, that's enough. So what I did was use those studio photos and paint them on, on, on a tissue and a fabric, like very, very fluid. And I, I placed them as curtains. And then I do these uh, mosaics of this collage of images, of archive images, which ones, some of them I manipulate. And then I have these triptychs. And then of course my, my small uh, bibliotheque, library, no, bibliotheque of books that it's increasing uh, thanks to grants. And, and now I have like more than 30 just uh, books that talk about that uh, and there are many many more of course and I mean not only uh, like very academical books but also poetry or, or, or novel or and then this was in in woods in in photo festival in Poland that I see Christoph is in around for the next Price. And here uh, I really had fun, and it was a very complicated setup, but which I learned a lot. Here I did, I usually do it myself, but here I ask a very good friend of mine, architect, to help me a little bit because it was a very complicated space, and I learned so much. And this is in Athens photo. And this was in, in, a, in a very special place in Madrid. And it was fun. It was just for one day. It was like the first thing that I did. Uh, 
and this is in Portugal. So, I mean, as you see, uh, and this is what's happening now. Now the exhibition is in two places in Madrid as the winner of this award, uh, and then in in Malta, in La Veleta, in in a group show called Art and Feminism. And well, due to all this pandemic, the exhibitions were closed, and now today, no, tomorrow it will be open. This one. And the other one is already opened. So uh, this is the new mosaic I just did. I mean, this is getting bigger and bigger each time. And this is the last thing that I will show you. It's an intervention in Foto Alicante. Alicante is in in the in Spain, in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and it was also fun to have something like placed on the street and with text. And that's it. Great. Thank you so much, Gloria. It was really, really interesting also to hear you speak about the works after, you know, we've seen them, but it's a totally different experience. And I think we have like a few minutes for questions. So we'll try to narrow them down. Also some of the questions that were asked, you've already answered during your lecture. Um, so I got already some, all questions during uh, your lecture as well. So there's one lecture, one question that repeated in different versions, which is uh, how did uh, the locals react to your project and for you being there and photographing them, you know, as a European uh, white woman. Well, especially relevant these days, I guess. Yeah, well, but I have to, first of all, I have to say that it's very different what happens in Africa as what happens in, 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 the, in America, in the United States. I mean, there, of course, you're white, of course, they know your privilege and and the privilege of whiteness is something that it's rooted and it's something that me personally, I, I mean, I, I, I don't like it at all and it makes me feel quite uncomfortable. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I I learned how to move around a little bit. So I think that I have much more respect over there maybe i mean i don't i usually don't steal photographs or if i do then i ask them permission because that's something that i, I learned that is something that they really don't like so you have to respect it still you then, mean still photographs like existing like, photographs or the no two? no no i mean taking the photo without permission yeah. Okay. Shooting the the photo of somebody without that person knowing. So even though I have many photos from the back, then I I I show them, and they. I mean, in Lagos, people are very nice, very very nice, and very polite. And um, I don't know. I didn't have that much problem. It just uh, okay. They don't like you to make photos, not even of a, d a door or of a wall. I mean, they feel that you're going to be rich with that, to get rich with that photo. So you just have to explain where do you come from, and and they have that rhythm of uh, time and space is so much different. But I have to say. Also, that me talking about this, it's I'm. I think I feel like one one thing that I say. I always say that we are very much responsible of of what we uh, bring back home and with what we say. So I I like to say to all the photographers that think before they talk about something and with the risk of exotizing it more and make it more um, further instead of approaching the another culture. So me talking about 
uh, another place is always from my experience, but I wouldn't like to generalize. Uh, but what is true is that my experience was very good. The three times I've been in Lagos, that is that place where whites sh shouldn't go because it's so dangerous and it's not true. That was like a black legend. And of course you can have anything, but you can have anything around the corner. Um, and on the other side, uh, I know that I was, I've, I've been, I've been criticized because of the, of my project and I accept the critics and I'm not going to try to convince every, everyone. I've been criticized by, by African women, which they don't, they don't understand why I have to talk, I have to put African women on images to talk about uh, colonization of the concept of women or is not uh, of the, the urgency of not universalizing the, the, the femin Western feminist discourses. So that's something that they don't understand. For me, I, I, can, I can explain it and, and that's it. And then it was shown in, it was going to be shown in, 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 in Adi's photo in two months, three months, but it's been postponed, the festival. And that's something that I'm really um, looking forward to. And it will be next year and mainly uh, talking with Aida Moulonet, the, the photo, great photographer and, and director of the festival. Uh, we've been talking a lot about this subject and well, I don't know, I, I'm dying to go over there because she really makes a big family around in the festival. And, and then uh, it was slightly shown in, in, in Lagos after my residence, but, and I, I mean, I got good feedback, but that was nothing. So, I mean, it's not going to like 100%. There's, it's a very sensitive subject. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so uh, there was one question also, if you strive to make a change in your work, and if you do, then how do you think photography and film can make a difference in the world today? You mean that if, if photography can move mountains? Well, yeah. If you if first of all, if you want to make this change, and if you know, if it's possible. Yes, of course, of course, I want to make a change, <laughs> but I'm not, nobody. <laughs> I would love to. I mean, who doesn't? I wish. I mean, of course, I'm prepared to shout and to to talk about everything, anything if. if if people listen to me, but uh, not that important. Um, yes, I, I have a lot of faith in art in general, in, 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 and in books and in films. Uh, of course, yes, I, absolutely. I mean, I mean, culture is uh, is the basis of of our social life, and. And now it's at risk, uh, and uh, even though we've been using it all these months or abusing from it, but but yes, of course. I mean, I I mean, I encourage everyone to. I I I believe a lot in artivism, and I invite everyone, even if you're talking about love, it's it's uh, activism. Yeah, we we. We think the same in our festival. <laughs> That's what we try to show also. We do. Uh, I think I'll ask you a last question because uh, we're getting after the hour. Um, so, what helps you keep creating for many years? And there was also a question that's related is uh, yeah, what's the one thing that keeps inspiring, inspiring you to photograph and to make art? Well, I don't know if that happens to to all these 
many people that I see that I'm, that I don't know and that I hopefully will be able to talk with soon. But as I explained on my presentation, I'm always, always one project takes me to the next one. So if I'm two or three years working on something, that's preparing the 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 the, the open door to to the next one. So now, while I was just um, working on this one, I I I mean, if I'm talking about the, the privilege of whiteness and or the whatever, and and that's inviting me to to so many things. Uh, and so my next project, which I have a grant already and that I'm hoping that I can do it because it, it means that I have to travel and, and for the moment being, we can't. But it comes absolutely from, from, my, from this project. And I will al always talk about more or less how men, uh, I don't know, uh, grabs the mind of, of the other, uh, I don't know how you say it. Okay. Uh, okay I got a little caught up. Uh, okay, so I think we're going to end and I want to thank you again. It was fascinating and I look forward to curating your show in Tel Aviv and hopefully to have you visit and uh, Thank you, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Well, thank you, Maya. I will be working together. Thank you, everybody. It was super great to having such a big audience. Thank you, Gloria. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Daphna. Thank you, Christina.